and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Flash. That's right, we're playing this deck again here in Mythic on our Rank Up Sunday stream. That's what we have going on today. The one other time that we played this deck, it felt awesome. As you all know from earlier in the week, uh, we went 5-0 with it in Mythic and it kind of felt like the best thing to be doing in Standard. Is that going to still be the case today? That's what we're going to find out. Um, yeah. So we got we got basically the blue-green flash deck, but we're adding in black for removal. I really like adding in the black for the removal. You know, having cast down Tyrant Scorn to be able to kill things. Even Tyrant Scorn can just bounce anything that just can help us win on uh, tempo. And, like, you know, put it back in their hand for us to counter it or put it back in their hands so we can kill people with, like, the Ambusher and the Cutthroat or even bounce our own Frilled Mystic. Maybe doing that. The Poisoners were pretty sweet. Really liked this card as just being another creature to uh, pressure, like, to fairies and pressure the opponent, ter help turn on Lookout's Dispersal. Um, we didn't really do the, the plus one, plus one too much, but we did it a couple of times. But it was just a solid creature. Uh, the only change I'm making from last time, keeping the main deck the same, I'm taking out the Shifting Ceratops from the sideboard. I really don't think that you need Shifting Ceratops uh, right now. So I'm taking them out. And I'm putting in two of these crafty cut purses for the scape shift matchups. Um, how this works is you do not, like if they cast scape shift, do not respond with with crafty cut purse. Because then they, they don't have to sacrifice any lands. And they're just like, okay. What what you want to do is they play scape shift, you let it resolve, they sack all their lands, they put all these lands into play, they get all the triggers on the, on the uh, stack to put a whole bunch of zombies into play. And with all those triggers on the stack, then you put in the Crafty Cut Purse, and you're like, hey, you know all those zombies you're going to make? Now they're coming in over on our side. And so there we go. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, and then I'm also putting in a couple more disfigures for the aggro matchups. I could see the aggro matchups giving us some trouble. But this is our deck. Let's give it a try. Let's go with Soul Tie Flash. Yeah, I would love to see that too. I haven't been able to do it yet. Hopefully we play against the Scape Shift opponent and hopefully we draw a Crafty Cut Purse and hopefully they draw a Scape Shift and that all works. Sorry, my eye was kind of bothering me. I had something in it. In your opinion, what's the better sideboard card when playing a Rakdos deck? Lava Coil or Obnixus' Cruelty? I think the only reason to play Omnixus's Cruelty instead of Lava Coil is if you want to get Nightpack Ambusher at instant speed. I'll go with Disdainful Stroke. I think besides that, you're probably going to want to be playing Lava Coil. Uh, th these were all my brews here. So I, I have heard that Mono Red is the worst matchup for Sultai Flash. Um, but of course, like... Not many people play Mono Red at all these days. But looks like we found an opponent that's playing it. Which is looking pretty bad for us. This is not good for us at all. Especially being on the draw with the mulligan, kind of tough. Now, Frilled Mystics, Frilled Mystics are good. You know, we can counter like a burn spell and block, but however, my opponent's not really incentivized to play anything, because they just get to attack with these Viachina Pyromancers. And that's just a really bad spot for us to be in, because they just don't have to play anything, and we're just going to be dead.
Yeah, I, I haven't had that experience, Hexbomb. I've I've more struggled. I, uh, you said your experience was getting flooded a lot and you cut a land. My experience has been I've, I've struggled having, like, double green for, like, these four drops and stuff. All right, well, we got three Disfigures in here. I hope Disfigures help us out. I cut Disdainful Stroke. So Sailor's, basically, I don't, so Sailor's not good in this matchup with Chain Whirler. The one thing that Sailor is awesome against, it's Sailor is very good against Viashino Pyromancer. In particular, like that's the card that I really like Sailor to be able to come in there and block. Lookout's Dispersal, also kind of expensive, of course. We just cut maybe we'll cut maybe we'll keep the sailors and cut the dispersals and maybe we try that. Or maybe we just go the coward's way out and go two and two. They both have like their real downsides, dispersal and sailor. I am Absolutely not cutting Frilled Mystic. Especially on the play. But no, Frilled Mystic's the kind of card that can help us win this matchup because of it being a two for one. Frilled Mystic doesn't get cut against anybody ever. Frilled Mystic and Nightpack Ambusher just don't cut them against anybody. Opponent played that well. Esbeta with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much for that support there. sub of the day. But yep, they have a lot of very good instant speed removal here in this deck. Certainly understand it being our worst matchup. Uh, nothing special for the 12 hour streams you know just just do like you know like we do with streaming playing awesome decks and everything but just do that for 12 hours but there's no like special events or anything during the 12 hour streams right now we are at 17 sub goals out of 20 so we're only three sub goals away from our next 12 hour stream so we'll be coming up here pretty soon probably next week Sun is much better against Field of the Dead than Alpine Moon is. Whoa, whoops. Alright, definitely understand why that's our worst matchup.
Yeah, especially, yeah, Mono Red's probably really good against Cape Shift, especially if they're just, you know, like, Mono Red sideboard has always been pretty bad. And so being able to play a card like Blood Sun, it just, it gives Mono Red, like, an actually, like, a good sideboard card for a very well-played deck. So I bet Mono Red with, like, four Blood Suns in the sideboard is probably a really good deck to be playing right now. But you just don't see people doing it. I think Mono Red really struggles against Esper, though. So we'll see. I think that's. I think Esper is the toughest matchup for Mono Red. And Esper is always just kind of popular. Yeah, I went really greedy there by going Disfigure on the on the Monkey instead of the Steamkin, because if I go on the Steamkin, then my you know, the monkey's killing my two ones, and I was going really greedy trying to have the two ones do stuff. Obviously, it didn't work. I don't think... Uh, I don't even know if Disfigure on Steamkin, I don't think would have worked either. I think we were dead. I think our most important card in that matchup is going to be Nightpack Ambusher. That was a card I did not have. Access to... Do I want to shock and opt? Don't think so. I'm gonna save the opt till after we have the cutthroat in play. Just don't think there's really anything that we are like needing to opt for. That turn. Ha, you call it anarchy. Me? Now that I can only punish you if they catch you. <laughs> Tomri's good. Can't counter stuff with Domri. Ha! You having a laugh? Uh, no, I haven't been thinking at all about after rotation. Standard always just changes a bunch. It's, it's fool's gold to try to figure out what's going to be good after rotation right now. Oh, I wish you could see your face when I've beaten you. Where are my removal spells at? This would have been a good time to find a removal spell. <laughs> Steedy, why do you think this game is over? What? Do you don't think I should concede? I think I'm going to win this. I got this. What's that? Something smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Okay, admittedly that makes it harder. Another Phoenix. The first Phoenix was going to be a challenge, but I think I had the first Phoenix, but a second Phoenix does make my life worse. Okay, now now I don't have it. Uh, second Phoenix and me not finding removal spell. Oh well, I was I thought I was gonna win it still before when you said that, but that's. Usually what you got to do, you got to be confident. 
All right, Rekindling Phoenix is kind of rough. So Noxious Grasps, so you kill Domri's. You're going to get on in here. Who am I taking out against Sailor, against Gruul? I'm wondering if I take out the Spectral Sailors, if if Lookout's Dispersal is too weak with just eight pirates. Probably not, but like maybe I just maybe I don't play the Negates. Domri Phoenix Phoenix. I mean, there's just a good. They can certainly be playing stuff like Nissa and other things like that. Let me take out one Negate. I guess all these things kill, like these Noctis Crafts just kill these Planeswalkers. Never mind, we'll cut the two Negates and keep two Sailors in. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Like, I couldn't counter anything that game. Everything, like, by the time I had counter magic, their things were uncounterable. That was unfortunate. Yeah, Crafty Cup Purse would steal the Rekindling Phoenix token. That is something. I'll look for mana. Are you serious? There's just not another land in here? That's not ideal. Bet you've never been hugged by a kraken before. Got what, like bombard or something? Okay. Something smells fishy here. Mm. Only gives the plus one whenever they're attacking. No Veil of Summer. I love to make a splash. Not sure why they minus, but maybe they just knew. I guess they're just thinking Kiora is going to die anyway. <laughs> My 
had a very slow hand there because my hand wasn't very good. And having Nightpack Ambusher makes your life a lot better. I don't know, like, is the Spectral Sailor really even doing anything? Like, should I just be playing more Disdainful Strokes? Maybe I should. All right, game number three. We are hoping to dodge Veil of Summers. I only have the one green source right now. I should probably be keeping that. Of course, I, Spellbreaker has Hexproof during their turn. I can't really do anything about that. Noxious, they have, well, they gotta have, yeah, they gotta have the uh, Veil of Summer, they just didn't give it haste, they gotta have Veil of Summer, right? That's a problem. So doing the one where we get to gain a life second. We can have the score and bounce the Phoenix. It's annoying. I'd like to draw a disdainful stroke to counter this Phoenix. Hey, what's up, Toxic Flames? Welcome back for 17 months. Or we could draw more land, you know, that too. Thanks for that resub there. Do I take this? Hmm. Yeah, I just take it. I know, kitty. It's rough. We need to draw a counter spell. Krakens, leviathans, octopuses, serpents. One drop ripples and grows. Perfect.
Moby with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Moby. Keeping this hype going there. Sub number 15 on the day. Alright, halfway to our next sub goal. The ocean surges, life thrives. And we're still just just passing turn, making three threes, I suppose. Another ambusher would certainly be a, a good draw. Wouldn't mind them drawing a Phoenix, considering we'd be able to disdainful stroke it right now. Okay, that's not bad. Oh, we don't have any pirates out here, as far as the the other part. That's not bad, though. I can play that and start pressuring with that next turn. Yeah, Ambush Viper. Get in there. Darn. They have the card to folly. My poisoner, stop drawing lands, deck. All right, so after the non-successful Esper Flyers experiment, I went into testing an Esper Pride Mate deck. And it's been a fun one, definitely not tier one, but has some nice energy and explosive plays. There you go, good. I like it. So, if, uh, yeah, I, d I don't get the 3-3 three, three by Noctis Grasping on my turn, but it's just worth it to do this and then attack in. Getting all them wolves. All right, one on one. So so far, mono red's the only deck I've lost to with this deck. Six and six and one playing it overall. But. But definitely played a lot of close games, though. Like, that one could have gone the other way for sure. I put the star next to what deck we're playing. What deck we're currently playing. And we are currently playing... Sultai Flash. Good little puppy. The puppers. No, I mean this deck this deck probably could be playing Land War Elf. But I don't I don't think it's really too necessary. Alright, another escape shift deck. Today has been the escape shift deck day. Drew Money with the Twitch Prime sub. 
Welcome to the channel there, Drew Money. Thanks for resubbing there. I appreciate that. I need lands. All right, sub number 16. We're four away. Four subscribers away from another sub goal. This isn't a fight you can win. Uh, no, you should not be going down in Mythic Percent for winning. That is not how it's supposed to be working. You're supposed to go up percent when you win, down percent when you lose. Trust me, I have a plan. We got the cut purses in the sideboard here for this. Only time will tell. But we may be, t like, with them having that ramp spell, we may be to the point where Lookout's dispersal isn't really helping me anymore. The only counter is unless they pay four, which they could have the extra mana to pay. Smart. Good shock in there. I just have to hope they don't have escape shift. So I'm not really winning against them just playing lands and stuff unless I get get the blocker out here. Right on schedule. So we gotta gotta deal with a little Teferi. But I feel pretty good about it. The dispersals are they are kind of risky. They're not gonna be full on counter spells all the time. Yep, Unmortigo can get rid of a land. It's 
So the thing about Poisoner here is Poisoner is real bad against zombies, but real good against Little Teferi. Spyglass has been just a little less amazing ever since these Planeswalkers have static abilities. That really hurts Spyglass. Mm. Slow this down. That's more like it. Come on, land. Okay, good. That was the worst case scenario, though. Turn two to fairy on their side. That really hurts because turn two to fairy means they have an O3 to block, also. Favorite breakfast food is cereal. I really like cereal. I'm... I'm, uh, eat, like, the... I guess, like, the healthier-ish cereal. Um, you know, lots of... Oats and stuff like that. Usually, like, the... Like, the almond cereals and the banana nut stuff and... All those kind of things. This is a, a perfect hand for my opponent against what I have going on here. It's absolutely perfect. This might be a bad idea. Oh, I can't even play this at instant speed either. Yeah, they got me. <clears throat> I haven't struggled against Teferi before, like we did this match. But this match, the difference was they had that O3 to block for the Teferi. That, that O3 combined with Teferi, and also letting you play Teferi on turn two, that really hurt. The previous times I've played against Teferi with this deck were against Esper, and I would, it was very easy to kill. Yeah, my mana wasn't good. I didn't have any of my four Noxious Grasps either, but yeah, Teferi was awesome against me there. That was just like the, the perfect scenario for my opponent. Teferi on turn two with a really good blocker to protect it. Like, that's hard to beat. They got me. Feather. I don't, like, Ashiok, like, if you think of, like, if we have Ashiok there, like, Ashiok wouldn't have helped us at all. I don't think that, like, playing Ashiok in this deck where we're trying to play instant speed all the time is really worth it. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, that that is true. Yeah, if we had good mana, we would have been able to negate to fairy. Absolutely, but yeah, we did not have good good mana. Come on, draw blue land. Darn. Hey, what's up, KB? Getting that gifted sub from Crazy Pyro. Thank you so much, Santa Crazy Pyro. Santa Pyro, there we go. I'm playing 24 lands in here. Playing 24. All right, that's sub number 17. Mike Turner! Thanks for that donation there. <laughs> yeah, we we have been we have been getting beat up by, with Sultai Flash here. We just need lands. We just need lands. And um, Audrinok also getting that gifted sub from Crazy Pyro. Thanks, Santa Pyro. All right, disfigure time. Probably want Noxious Grasp here. Yeah, I guess Noxious Grasp is going to be better than Cast Down against Feather. The thing is, is it's worse against the... No idea what you're talking about, Ike. Um... This is worse against Feather if uh... Hey Karmic, thank you so much there. They have the 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 uh one in a red one three. Anyway, Disdainful Stroke out. Do need negates here with this matchup. Let's give this a try here. All right, sorry. Crazy Pyro, going crazy. And we have Jane getting in on this hype train as well. And man, everybody's getting the hype votes in the chat also. Thanks, everybody. Y'all are awesome. And thank you so much, Crazy Pyro. Organic Chicken. That's a sweet little name there. All right, so I need to update this. So where are we at? We're at 22 subscribers. On our way to the third sub goal here. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna shock in this watery grave because we're gonna opt look for land. All 
not land. Okay, we got a lot better hand, a lot more functioning hand, hand here. Lolly Jaeger getting the gifted sub. Now keep this hype going. Hmm. Tough call of what to do here. If I scorn... If I scorn, that's really bad against a feather. All right, tough game here. Not looking good. Typhlete Poisoner is like pretty perfect right now. Typhlete Poisoner was really big. Real big time here. Aw, uh, thanks Koa. Thank you so much there. Hmm. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Thanks for that support. I love it. Even the new subscribers are getting their hype boats in there too. Thanks, y'all. I don't think it's very good for me to play defense or like to to try to play defense here because you know they could just have removal to kill my things. I think it's just good for me to just try to race. Well, now I wish I had one of those things back. Yeah, but they they just don't have spells. If they're just attacking with the feather like that, they just don't have spells. Yeah, I've been happy with the Hellkite in the Gruel list.
All right, they're down to one. No, ambusher. This is going to be a close one. That was a definitely a good turn, you know, like with their four mana taking out the ambusher and Frilled Mystic. Whoa, they. I think they blocked the wrong creature there. I think they should have blocked the poisoner. Alright, do we draw removal? Or another poisoner? Or more land? Well, they're ahead now. Oh man, that's a killer. GG's. There's too many lands over here. <laughs> yep, just drew a bunch of lands. I mean, I guess we could draw like Siren Storm, to, like the Siren card. Maybe draw removal here. Not removal. But I guess we do get War Boss out of there. So that's good. Let me lead the charge into darkness. I will lend you my strength. Finish this out. Uh, not quite. I think we actually have this now, though. Yeah, Ambusher plus Frilled Mystic should have this. Yeah, this is looking good for us, for sure. I believe in you, friend. Indestructible. Hooray. So I don't think I don't know about saving it. Cause I oh don't know, they'd be able to like minus six their Gideon and exile my Nightpack Ambusher the next turn. You know, like they go to attacks, I have to jump block again, and then after that, then they get rid of my ambusher. I feel like just getting the Frilled Mystic there is the, the best thing to be doing. Oh, I guess I couldn't draw a Spectral Sailor because there's none in my deck. Poisoner was amazing. Let me get another Poisoner in here. That card was awesome against Dreadhorde Arcanist. Just take out Lookout's Dispersals. Yeah, 
Yeah, I do like Sultai, Sultai Flash more than Simic Flash. Good, no, not a Danto Vanguard. That's certainly good. Hmm. Alright, Arcanist isn't really that big of a deal. Certainly wish, you know, we had the double green for the ambusher, but such is life. Another green source. Would be nice to have the one extra mana here to be able to have one more one more response to that. Oh that didn't that didn't help save my thing. Right. Well, oh well. Oh well we got rid of the one three. So of course I do not want to go cutthroat and then grasp there because I you know can't really afford them having like God's willing or something like that. This we can handle though. Now we got negate available. So we're good there. Yay, green. All right, looking good for us. Pretty sure we outrace those. I'll take it. Ooh, 
We want them to draw a spell here, not, you know, for our negate, not a creature this turn. Next turn they can have a creature because we'll have the Frilled Mystic. Sure. I know Cutthroat gets bigger than Feather, but sure, I'll just trade him. So not attacking with Feather and not blocking. We have the Pacifism on there. Perfect. Thank you for waiting a turn to draw your creature for us. Okay, two and two. Working our way back. And we're playing one more here with Sultai Flash. We're gonna break the tie, try to get to three and two. <laughs> flash Goyf is so good. What doesn't resolve grow, grows the Flash Goyf. That's pretty good. <laughs> We'll play the temple on turn three. You know, we'll have like Brineborn on two, Scatter on three. Scatter on three. With temple, you know, like we don't really need the third mana. I mean, I guess we'll see if I need to scatter this thing. Should I scatter that? Maybe not. Really hoping no Soren. Just no Soren, please. No. That was the one card. I drink only the finest. The one card. You smell well aged. The one well card I didn't want you to have. Family. That was it. All right, fine. I'm blocking. Have right, to save our life. I take one more damage getting the lieutenant out of here than I would have taken. Instead of getting champion of dusk out. I bestow a mighty curse. This is just over. Soren's too good, man. Soren's so good. Anything else? I think we could have had that game. Soren's the card, though. That's the card that's really hard to beat. How does countering their play on turn two? 
How does that help Soren not them not play Soren? I still would have died to Soren. How does Essence scattering the the lieutenant help me not die to Soren? I don't see any any way that I would have been in a better position Essence scattering their creature over playing Cutthroat on turn two with the Soren. Way too far behind because I didn't counter. I also I played a creature. It was the exact same whether I have like the cutthroat and they have the lieutenant, or if I if we neither of us have any of them, it wasn't really any different. I would argue that cutthroat is better than lieutenant, and it's better for me to have cutthroat in play and them have lieutenant in play than us have neither. I'd argue that I was I would have been farther behind if I would have countered. No, Sailor's definitely not useless. It's also not... Not amazing. This hand can certainly be too slow. Love double ambusher on the play. We'll see if we get there or not. Sailor is a threat against Soren. That's... That's that's the best thing that Sailor does is if they play Soren and minus, then I can play Sailor in response and kill the Soren. That's that is the best possible thing for Sor for Sailor for sure. Wouldn't mind being able to play Ambusher with Veil of Summer back up to protect it. But I may need to just be playing these Ambushers. That's Night Pack Ambusher Vipers. Hmm. No. I gotta just let damage happen. So there's like a champion. You know, like a five five mana champion here. I gotta counter it. Good one. Oh, I don't have triple green. What am I doing? Shocking in there. I guess so now I have cutthroat, dispersal, veil. I guess. Please play something. <laughs> uh, not really that. Dead to fly is. I 
Okay. So we ended up going 2-3 with Sultai Flash. Not too surprising there. I don't really... Alright, so... I know that the instant reaction that some people will have is, Oh man, what went wrong with Sultai Flash? I thought it was so good. How did it possibly go 2-3? I do, I do think that our weakness is going to be Mono Red and Vampires. That's going to be a weakness. Especially if we play against opponents that have very good hands. Um, that's going to be a weakness to Sultai Flash. We played against both of those matchups. Our opponents had very good hands all those games. And... Um, you know, we stumble a little bit, we're losing, and that's what that's what was happening. And uh, so, I, I do think that that's those are our bad matchups: the mono red and the Orzhov vampires. They just have so many cheap spells; they're very aggressive. With us having the three color mana base is kind of it can be rough, as we saw there at times. Those are matchups where we're not going to be favored in. I don't think they're not like zero percent; like it's not like they're unwinnable, but we're not favored. Um, so those were two of our losses. Our, I don't, I don't know. If Feather is so tough. I don't know. We, you know, we played against Feather also. It, I, f I felt like I would, I would rather play Feather because Feather is a lot slower deck, and I think that's good, that's a lot better for us. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's easier for us to beat the slower deck, and for Feather to really do its thing, it needs Feather needs the their spells to resolve because they only go back to the hand if they resolve and we have like the counters with it with having all the negates in there to kind of keep those things from resolving um no mu yanling would certainly not be worth it whatsoever um anyway besides that so yeah those were two of our losses our third loss was to scape shift which i honestly don't think is that bad but we saw like where we're going to struggle is whenever they have like game one they had multiple teferis game two they had that turn two teferi when they have a lot of Teferis or just like really fast Teferi because of the O3, those can be the games that we can lose. That's, you know, like that's that's going to be a struggle there. Um, but, you know, so we there are, there are a few holes in the deck. And I think we saw like the holes with the three losses. I think those are like really the things that I, I think that Sultai Flash loses to is it's going to be... Uh, an underdog against mono red, an underdog against vampires, and if Scapeshift has a really awesome hand of like you know turn two to fairy, and you know our mana was bad, like I couldn't turn two negate because we had two tap lands kind of thing. I think overall I'm I feel pretty good about the Scapeshift matchup honestly, but that those games are like the ones that we can lose. Um. Besides that, I do like Sultai Flash. Still think it's very good. Not really. I don't really feel any worse about it after going two three. Um, yeah, still think it's very good. Uh, but there we go. That's Sultai Flash. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the deck. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I guess we can't say I, how I took out the. All, like, you know, last time when we played it, we had four Shifting Ceratops, and I took out all of those for two Disfigures to help those aggro decks, which, by the way, we, like, never had Disfigure, and two Crafty Cuppers, which, obviously, we never had those against Scapeshift. But, you know, I, I did put in things, like, for, specifically for Scapeshift and for aggro. I was trying to help out those matchups there. So I, I was on the right track there with the sideboarding, but, you know, it just didn't work out for us. Anyway, um, uh, I don't... I don't know how to answer your question of how much better this this deck is than Simic Flash. Like I just don't don't know. I I do think it's I would I would never play Simic Flash. Basically, I would much rather be playing this kind of thing. Um. Anyway, there we go. So yeah, if you're watching over there on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.